Welcome back to another episode of the Miami Heat Roundtable. My name is Amir. On today's episode, we got Martel. You can find him at the Miami Heat Zone podcast. And we got Trent. You can find him at the Miami Heat Network. And we have another special guest for you joining us from the Five Reasons uh, program. We got Sean Rochester. How are you doing today, Sean? I'm doing good, guys. Thanks for having me. No problem, man. Excited to have you on. Uh, so, Sean, next week, finally, we're getting closer to training camp, media day, and preseason. So it's been a quiet, slow, long off season. Uh, not a lot has happened, uh, obviously, because the Miami Heat are almost a second apron team. So couldn't really do much in terms of free agency. And the guys that we've been speculated uh, or rumored to potentially trade for just don't fit the bill. They don't make sense financially for this Miami Heat team. So we're excited that we're going to have some stuff to cover next week. But going into training camp, Sean, want to gather your thoughts because I know the Miami Heat have a lot of questions they need to address going into the season uh, in order for them to avoid the play-in team and, and be successful um, in this crucial year, which might be the last year in the Jimmy Butler build. So my question to you, Sean, like in training camp and in, in the preseason, what are some of the biggest things the Miami Heat need to address going into the season? Are there any concerns that you may have? Well, I mean, I would say coming into training camp, I think the first thing is the competition, right? And there was a quote that came from Ethan that basically two roster spots, two starting spots are guaranteed. We would assume that's Jimmy and Bam. The other three are up for competition, and therefore the rest of the rotation is up for competition. And, and that's what you want. I mean, any of us that have competed in any sport, you want to have a chance. When you go out there and there's 12 guys on the roster, if I'm better than you in training camp and practice – I want to have a chance for those opportunities to get on the floor when the lights are bright. Right. And so, you know, I think that also brings out the best, you know, we talk about heat culture and it's sometimes a, a tag word that people don't like, but if you have guys that are coming in, whether it's the rookies, whether it's the guys that we signed, Alex Burks, Nasir Little, whomever competing against guys that have been here, you know, throughout the duration, Duncan Robinson, et cetera. Um, who's the best guy? And the best guy is going to play. And Spo has, you know, been known to do that throughout his time. And we talked a little bit before we started uh, recording about the the, uh, the undrafted guys. He's not afraid. He doesn't care about your resume before you got here. He cares about what you do when you get here. And that's how he chooses who he's going to play. And so I'm kind of excited about that. Obviously, we didn't land the big name. We didn't get the, you know, the Dame Lillard last summer or anybody this summer that was a, you know, significant signing. But I'm excited about the competition within the roster that is there. So then, Sean, where do you see this Miami Heat ranked within the Eastern Conference? You know, you have the Boston Celtics. They're not going anywhere. Then you have the Villanova Knicks. That was tampering how they got Mikael Bridges. Then you also have the Philadelphia 76ers where Paul George and Joel Embiid, they kind of have to prove to us if they can really even stay healthy. But then you also have those, you know, younger teams like the Cavs, the Orlando Magic, and the Pacers where – I think we have to take the regular season seriously. I think that's like 50% of it, obviously because of health and all that stuff like that. But this season especially, we have to start off the season the best way possible because there's a lot of young teams, and then you still have these older teams that still have, like the Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, Damon Giannis, they still have so much to prove. So where do you see this Miami Heat team within the Eastern Conference? Yeah, I mean, barring something tragic in the Northeast Corridor, it's going to be hard to you know get over those three teams, New York, Boston, Philly. That being said, there are questions on those teams, like injury questions. The Knicks don't have a center right now because he's hurt. They lost their other center going to Oklahoma City. Are they going to play Julius Randle there? Is he going to hold up? Is he healthy? Joel Embiid obviously has always got injury questions. What's Paul George going to look like in Philadelphia? Can the three of those guys exist? Um, you know, Boston is very good, but you're not going to have Porzingis at the beginning. You know, when it comes to Miami, you can start thinking about them at four, but realistically, now you got to start looking at Cleveland. They brought everybody back. They're going to get better. They were a young team with good pieces that played well and went to the second round. You have Orlando that was very young, that won the division last year. There's teams, you know, Milwaukee, what are they going to look like? Now we're down at six, seven, eight. I, you know, who knows? It's, it's a big question is health. What is our team going to look like? Like you said, Martel, the approach that they take to the regular season. I wish I was a fly on the wall. I know the coaches for the Heat had a retreat before training camp. What was that conversation like? Like the philosophical approach of what they're going to go into this season, what they're going to run, X's and O's and stuff like that, but more so about what's the approach. I don't think that they don't necessarily take it seriously. I think that's something as a fan, we sort of paint that picture. Like they're going out there and trying to win 82 times, but it's not always within your control, right? Just because you want to win doesn't mean you're going to win. 
However, to your point, activating players, taking games off, things like that, that's the philosophical approach that I think can shift. And we saw that when Pat talked about the team at the end of last season. He hinted towards that, that something has to change, and we know who that starts with, which is the leader of the team is Jimmy Butler. What's going on, Sean? So, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people that go and speak the real. This team overall is just not good enough. But we got to look up to our leader, and that's Jimmy Butler, like you said. And um, media day is coming up, and Jimmy Butler likes to troll and stuff like that. And when the season ended, Pat Riley did kind of call him out about, you know, his Instagram posts and just telling him to shut up and whatnot because, you know, he wasn't out there dealing with injuries. And then also he doesn't give him his contract extension. So, one, do you think Pat Riley is a little bit fed up with Jimmy Butler's antics and, you know, him in the regular season, uh, load managing, I like to say, or Martell likes to say, because, you know, you look at his games play to be like 54 to 60, but how many games is he really out there trying and actually performing? And then he's missing games to whatever the case may be. So, you know, when you got a player like that who is aging, I think it's near the end of the Jimmy Butler era, dealing with more injuries. You know, how do you think Pat Riley's looking at Jimmy Butler right now heading into the season? Do you think they give the extension? Or do you think it's like midseason, this team's struggling, we need to get assets out of Jimmy, get some first-round picks and go from there? Yeah, I mean, that's a, a lot of good questions there, a couple of levels of that. So I think back to last season, and you guys, obviously, like all of us, we watch those games. For those of us that have to cover the team, we're doing these post game shows after disappointing games and losses. And I remember a lot of times, a lot of it was oftentimes me, Greg, and Brian Fonseca talking after these games. And the performances of Jimmy were oftentimes questionable in that it didn't look like he was giving full effort. And I remember so many times saying that I didn't mind Jimmy missing games. Like, if you need to rest, rest. But if you're out there, you're out there. Like, it's there's no in between. You can't lace them up and then go out there and, like, feel your way through the game. How many times in the first half are you like, wait, is Jimmy Butler playing? Like, is he hurt? Is he – the question marks that you have. And I feel like that was so hard for the his teammates because you think you – know, you know what Jimmy can do. We all know that. But also, I think for Spo and the coaching staff, like, how do you game plan not knowing going in? Like, they're not having a conversation with Jimmy. Like, hey, Jimmy, you going to play hard today? And he's like, ah, maybe. No, no, that's not what he's doing, right? So, like, how do you go in and game plan if you don't know what Jimmy Butler you're going to get when he's active? If he's inactive, it was almost easier because then you could be like, all right, Jaime, you slide into this spot. Now we can run more actions for Bam. We do this. We do that. It was just always that question mark. And it was like, is he, you know, getting himself into shape? Now it's December. Now it's January. Soon it's April. And then obviously the injury happened at the end and didn't even matter. But we just need him to be at his best for somewhere around 60 games. If he needs to miss games, he misses games. Like, you know, his age is his age. Father time is undefeated. Um, I saw the guys. I saw some social media clips that everybody seems to be in Miami working out. Jimmy's not there. Listen, I'm not the guy that's going to react to the damn social media stuff. Like Tyler Hero can post all the IG workouts in the world. You don't have to get – if you do a workout and it's not on Instagram, it's okay. It still counts. That applies to everybody. That's a life lesson that I'm going to drop on you guys, not for just the NBA, right? Like it's okay. But there is something to be said about that chemistry. And I know people in our network have said Jimmy hasn't spoken to the – you know, basically to the front office the entire summer. I don't what do you read into that? That doesn't sound good to me. Martha, what are you gonna say? But Sean, don't you think, but to me, that's a problem. Because like I said, you talking on Instagram, you know, during the playoffs, saying this, that, and the third. And like I said, players don't really have to like appease us and stuff like that. But to me, it's kind of concerning when Jimmy Butler's not there. Prime example. He had a like a mouth procedure done and he didn't play any of the preseason games. Cool. But if you're gonna do that, how are you gonna miss a third regular season game? My thing is. Why does Jimmy Butler want all this money? Okay. But when you look across the NBA, okay, you have Giannis, Joel Embiid. They play during the regular season. And you can say, well, okay, now I see why we're paying them. Even though they're older, now I see why we're paying them because you get the production. And I agree with you. I don't want Jimmy Butler to play 82 games. No. But then at the same time, when you're out there, you have to give the effort because then now Tyler, Bam, and everyone's looking around like, well, is Jimmy going to play or not? And then it, that just absolutely ruins team chemistry. And like I said, how does he want us to pay him like a superstar? 
and he's not there. But then also, too, do you believe in paying players for what they've done in the past? Because we've given Jimmy Butler the money. We gave him $145 million. So I think that we've been pretty fair. We let him fly around. We let him do all these other extracurricular things that the big three didn't even get to do. So you know what I'm saying? So it's like, how are we going to justify giving Jimmy? Like, it's kind of like what Trent was saying. It's like, how can we pay this man all this money? And it's like, it's like almost like he he doesn't really care. You see what I'm saying? Mark, yeah. Go ahead. Trent. Well, can I add something to that real quick? Go ahead. Go ahead. So, and great example. He's not at the workouts, whatever. But I look at the, the 76ers because teams are posting their players and stuff. They're out there playing top golf. They're looking like a team. It looks like they're gaining chemistry and all that stuff. And then you look at Miami. Where's our best player? He's where where is he? He's in Hall. No, you know what it you know what it really seems like. And this is what I was getting at was it's leaning to he's leaving. He he's no longer gonna be in the NBA soon, and that's because of retirement. Because if you notice, he's going to like these Netflix premieres, he's in movies a little bit more. Like he's in a lot more of this stuff that's kind of like after the NBA stuff, right? And I'm not saying he's retiring anytime soon, but that's what it kind of seems like. That's all he's caring about this moment, trolling, bro. This is your last, in my opinion, this is the last season for this team can, can compete because then you go into next year, does he accept his player option? Do you trade him? Do you give him a contract extension? Like next year, well, two years from now after this season, like it's, a, it's, it's huge. So I don't really like that approach. And as you, as the leader, people look up to you. And when people are not seeing us there, it's like, like you said, Martel, like, why should I try? My leader's not even trying. So it's pretty hey, rough. I agree with what you're saying. First of all, talking about the Sixers, I don't know if you guys know, I live in Philadelphia. I saw that top golf mm-hmm. thing yesterday, right? I did say this multiple times today. I thought it was a great joke. They were at top golf. You know how many rounds they played? They definitely didn't play more than two because you know the damn Sixers never make it past that second round, even at top golf. But listen, <laughs> good one. Jimmy Butler, Travis Kelsey. I'm sure you guys watch football. Travis Kelsey right now, he's not playing very well through three weeks of the NFL season. Why isn't Travis Kelsey playing well? Because I'm a Niner fan, so F the Chiefs. So, because Taylor Swift's gonna break his heart. I don't no, know. He, there we go. It's, he's not. He's, he's not playing well because he's getting. He ain't focused. One. He's not focused. No, no, it's not that. Hold up, hold up. He's not playing. There's well. a lot of parallels, right? He's an older player. He's doing a lot of stuff off the court that he didn't used to do. I don't buy into that. This is my thing, and I said this in our uh, in our five on the floor Discord. Check that out if you're not part of that. Uh, Two ninety nine a month. You can come and chop it up with basically Heat fans all the time on our Discord. But people were talking about Jimmy with that. And kind of the same conversation we're having. I agree with you guys. I wish he was focused. I wish he was with the team. All those things, I wish. But all I care about is when it comes to next week and when it's time to play basketball for those 48 minutes, those two and a half hours a day, I don't care if your friend's off the court. I, I could care less. Him and him and Bam don't have to hang out. They don't have to like Tyler. But when they play, the, pr- the product that comes out there, that's what I care about. Jimmy can go all over the, the world the entire summer long, hang out with whatever his buddy Ernie and all those boys. That's fine. Do whatever you want. Make Netflix series. Do all that stuff. But when the season comes, if you're not playing to your level, which we know Jimmy Butler's level is not what we saw last year, that's when I have a problem and I agree with everything you guys said. If he goes out there and plays at a all-star, a very good level, near MVP level, whatever it is, an all-star above, whatever. Do whatever you want all all season. Do you think he I, can though during the regular season though? Because like we, he has that formula. We don't know what Tibbs did to him. Like obviously all those miles. But I'm just saying like he obviously can't put in the effort to be a superstar in the regular season. He saves it for the playoffs. We saw that last season. No, when, but Amir, he can. He can. We don't need 82 games. We need a competitive great. 65. That's why? It. Why That's not 82? Like, the, because These Gen Z guys are so nobody, soft. Play Nobody's 82. playing 82 anymore, so let's just get that out of the way. And yeah, they are. Net, who's playing 82 like that? Paul, Paul George played 77. That that is that counts to 80. I'll round that up to 82 for a guy. Like, if Paul George okay, can do it, listen, with his, I get what that. Is I get Jimmy, that. What injury has Jimmy really had? Like he hasn't torn his ACL or broken a leg or any like but it's major not about injury. Some, I'm just some people's just, body is just made out of glass. Unfortunately, it's like what Sean said. We don't need him to play 82. We need a competitive 65. It's like wait, when he's on the court, it's time to play. Not this passive, eight points, yeah. passing the ball around. Let's be realistic. This Miami Heat team can – we have to beat teams that we should be beating, the Pistons or, you know, the Charlotte Hornets or the Spurs. We shouldn't be losing those games. Yeah, you need Jimmy at a – you know, if you're grading him like we are in school, A or B level, you need, you need him at least 41 of the games A or B level. 
probably more, to be honest with you. But, you know, you're going to have – Giannis is going to have games where he's he's a C-level player. Like, he just doesn't have it that night, and that's okay. But the question mark is, if he's not going to make 20 games, he also can't have 30 more games where Jimmy is at, like, a C or D level and he's not supporting because, unfortunately, as we've said, the roster is not strong enough to support that. Can we, yeah. can we, can we talk about an individual player because – Jimmy, Jimmy's gonna have to show up, but we're gonna talk about Tyler Hero real quick because I, I can't stand this bum. So that's the next player that that needs to step up. Like outside of Jimmy, it needs to be Tyler, right? He, they called him fragile. He's the same player for the last three years. Like, what what can we expect out of this dude? Like, I feel like he's been in trade rumors for the last five seasons. He never gets traded. It's like it's like their prize. Like they cannot let go of this dude or bench him or become a six man. Like. Like, because I still don't think Terry and Tyler can work out together. I just haven't seen it enough. Maybe they prove me wrong. But I feel like Tyler needs to take a leap from 20 to 23 to 25. Like, I'm seeing Tyrese Maxey turn in from a, a regular player to almost a superstar. Why can't we see that from Tyler? Like, Tyrese Maxey right now is is is, is their first or second option, I, I think. I think he's over Paul George. So it's just like, why can't we get those leaps with Tyler Hero? Tyler Hero had one good playoff game in look terrible after they probably killed all his trade value no teams it seemed like wants him what do we do with this cat like what do we do with him oh i get the answer to that question <laughs> no, absolutely <not. laughs> um look um the playoff series the thing about that is look we we, we were fighting with nothing like to get that one game because a lot of it was with how well he played that was a miracle in itself um you know his experience over his career, yes, he's dodged every trade bullet. I don't know how. It always seemed like it was imminent. It does seem like his time in Miami is coming quickly to a close. I mean, it just seems like it's starting to add up to that. They're going to have to trade someone at some point. Ethan always talks about they always end up trading the third guy, and he is clearly the third guy. Um, the problem that I see is if I would have gone back last summer or even two summers ago, I always felt like, and Greg and I always talk about this, I always wanted not necessarily the Shaq trade, but like the Antoine, J. Will, Posey, that trade. And that's what I would have liked to see them do with Tyler. If we could have got Dame Lillard, don't get me wrong. That would have been amazing. But if we could have traded him last summer and gotten pieces, supporting role guys, I, I don't have examples in my head, but I'm thinking like the Nets was Finney often Smith. rumored. Finney, Finney Smith. Smith. Dinwiddie, those types of guys that were always talked like those types of pieces. I think the ship has kind of sailed on that in a way. It's still possible. But at the same time, now is the roster good enough to support that? Because now is Jimmy going to be good enough to be the leader of a team that is supported by the DFSs and those types of guys? I don't know. That's a, that's a tough question. Um, you know, in terms of Tyler, if we're looking at what can he do since he is going to be here, unless he gets traded in the next week, which Pat Riley has done previously, he got Alonzo morning the day before the season started. So I guess it could happen. Um, I don't know. I agree with you guys. The Terry Tyler backcourt is a interesting situation to me. Can Spo scheme things to make it work? But I just question the defense. How is that going to work? We know that the lineup pairings with Duncan have been better. Can Tyler accept a role off the bench? Can he – he probably will put up better stats if he's off the bench. If you, you know, change your rotations and the way that they stagger lineups that way, can he buy into that? How does that work with Jaime and other guys probably coming off the bench? It's a lot of questions, and that's what I think, you know, Amir, you're, we're excited about next week as you start to get some answers to those questions next week instead of the same, you know, I don't know if we're allowed to curse on here, but the same BS that we've talked about Literally since May, when we lost to the Celtics, we've been regurgitating the same nonsense over and over and over and over. And literally nothing has changed besides Alex Burke, some rookies, and Nasir Little. Like, it's I'm so ready for something new. So yeah. what's your what's your expectations on Kanshad, um, Kalel Weir, and um, I believe it's Larson this year? Yeah. You know, this is the first time in three years that I didn't get out to Vegas for summer league. My I coach AAU and my schedule just didn't work out this year to go out there. If you've never been to Vegas for summer league, do it. I, I don't care if the Heat have no rookies that are worth watching. Go out there and just be every day for like three days. Go to Vegas, be in the gyms, walk back and forth, see those young guys up close. It's amazing. 
I watch the summer league on TV, which doesn't give you that same perspective, but obviously where is very good. I think you need to kind of put a temper on how his expectations are until we see it with the pro level. Yes. Summer league. He was great. College. He was solid. He answered some questions in summer league, but there are people that think he should start. Meanwhile, he hasn't played an NBA second yet. Like slow down. It's the same thing we saw with Nico, like slow down. It takes time for these guys. He's still a young player. He has to learn. If he see, if they see that he can play, he brings something that we don't have anywhere else on the roster, right? He's a long, athletic, vertical threat. He's shown that he can shoot it a little bit. Not great, but it has to improve. He can obviously defend. He's going to have to show that motor. He's going to have to show the ability to be in the right spot defensively, which I think is the key. Then when you talk about the other guys, Keisha Johnson, kind of your Caleb Martin type guy, a uh, uh, switchable wing, kind of small ball four. Can he shoot the ball? If he can, he's going to be all right. If not, he's going to struggle. But I think they see a lot in him, and especially with his just strength and athleticism, I think he's going to find an opportunity. And then Pella Larson, we saw that last uh, in that championship game in the summer league, was excellent. He's just all over the place, kind of has a high IQ, great uh, – uh, motor getting around the, you know, playing on offense, playing on defense, shoots it pretty well. Um, and I just think that these guys are exciting to have. Like their role might not be there right away. People are going to get pissed when Kevin Love is playing in the opener over Kalel Ware. But we have to understand, like, are, what are we trying to do? What is the goal? And that's a different answer for you ask different fans. I'm sure if you ask the four of us, I bet some of us are like, let's punt Jimmy. Let's start the rebuild now. Some of us are like, look, if certain things break the right way, we can get in the top four and we know we got Spo. We had to figure out a direction in those first 20 to 25 games, I think are going to be the real answer to that. How do those games go? If we start off slow, we might go a different direction. If we start off fast, you might see a different direction that way. So then what's your starting lineup? So like if you're Spo, what's, what is your starting lineup? I just want to make sure that we know because you guys, I don't know if you listen to five on the floor, but we start talking. I know you're positions. not a big position, guys. I know that. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. going to hit that yeah. red button in a second. No, I'm messing yeah. with you. Um, I would start Bam. Um, I would obviously start Jimmy. I would start, I think it's going to be Terry and Tyler and Nico. I think, though, this is, this is my thing. If it were me. Yeah, you're a coach. Who would you want in this scenario? I think that I would start assuming that Terry is good. I saw he was doing five on five work. I'm trying to go Terry, Duncan, Jimmy, and I want competition for that four spot. Okay. I know I don't use positions, but I want that other spot. Nico has to earn it. I know there's been a lot of controversy with like Tyler. Remember, he didn't earn that spot. He was given after the six man of the year thing. Let's be honest. Nico got that starting spot because there were no other choices at that point. And don't get me wrong, I like Nico. He is a good player. But now there's competition. You can start Jaime there. You can start Highsmith there. If Keyshot is good enough, you could start him. Technically, you could start Ware there and move Bam around. You could start Jimmy there. I want to see who wins that spot. That's the one that's more interesting to me than, honestly, the Terry Tyler thing. Because I think one of them will come off the bench eventually once they figure it out. Yeah, I could see Haywood in the starting lineup obviously for defensive purposes, especially if we have Terry and Tyler yeah. starting in the backcourt. And I mean, Jovic has played 62 games in three seasons. He's only 21 coming off the bench is not going to be the end of the world. And I personally, like, I think we can unleash him and showcase his skill set coming off the bench. We have no real backup point guard. Who is it like Burks until Jay rich comes back. Like, obviously we have guys who can handle the ball a little bit and play make off the bench, but mm. like I could see him being our point forward you know like yeah. Lamar Odom-esque back in the day like for the Miami Heat like sure. I wouldn't mind because he's just gonna if he's a starting four he's just gonna have to create space and catch and shoot threes base basically like and let Jimmy and Bam yeah. operate in the paint so like he's just gonna stand around like sure he can do the transition stuff but when Jimmy's in there like we're playing we're a half court team and we're slow right and like I know Spo wants to obviously speed that up with Terry and Tyler and Bam and the younger guys but yeah it should be should be interesting but Sean, before we do hop off, if there's any, you want to say something? Go for it. I was just going to say, but that goes right to Martel's point earlier about Jimmy. If you don't know what Jimmy you get, why are we adjusting our offense for Jimmy if we don't exactly. know what Jimmy we're going to get? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it would be like, 
I just I don't know what the analogy I'm trying to think of, but like we can be better playing fast. And everyone says that in training camp. Let's play fast. But yes. look at the young guys we got around and the way that we can play. Bam can get up and down the floor. Nico can. Tyler and Terry can. Jaime obviously loves to play that way. But if Jimmy's great, you adjust for him. Don't get me wrong. But if he's not, what are we doing? And adding Keyshot in the mix if there's injuries, obviously. Watching oh, him in sure. transition in the dunker spot. like Yeah. Yeah, and we mentioned this earlier too with with Jimmy load. Martel would always say he load managed in games too, right? When he wasn't trying, when he wasn't really facilitating or taking ten shots or below, like that's mm-hmm. not going to do justice. And he last season was not finishing at the rim at the same clip. He wasn't getting to the line after the was it All Star break when the refs stopped blowing the whistle as much. Sure. He started standing more so in the corner and like yeah, his three point shot like percentages have increased. It was like forty percent, which is great, but like. He's settling for those. And is that a sign of father time, which we talked earlier? So if he wants to play slow, we don't need to change that, those dynamics yeah. and the scheme. Because, I mean, what we're 27 in the points per game last year, 21st in offensive rating. Like, we need to improve offensively if we want to avoid the play-in, which comes to my last question, Sean, predicting the season. So they, Vegas projected us to get 44.5 wins, which I think is less than last season. I think we had 46. That puts us back at the eighth spot. Do you think the Miami Heat – if healthy, will be a play-in team? Or do you think if they're healthy, they could be one through six? I think Alex yesterday um, said even if healthy, he still thinks the Miami Heat are a, a play-in team. So what are your thoughts on that before we hop off? I mean, if you had to bet on play-in or no, I would say, wow. Um, I would bet that they're on the bottom half, you know, somewhere in that five to ten range. Uh, if you're telling me 44 and a half, I think I would bet over. Um, I do think that they they will adjust appropriately for the regular season. I think, you know, if we're looking back at the last five years, the the build that this team is most like is first year Jimmy. Like the expectations of that team were not obviously, and that was a weird season with the COVID pandemic, but yeah. we came into that. We were very exciting. Like we didn't think that, right? Jimmy came in. We thought we were going to be better. Tyler's a rookie. You got Kendrick Nunn as a rookie. That team's ball movement was excellent. And that team got better as the year went on. They made the acquisitions of Andre and Jay. And then obviously things shut down kind of at the right time for the Heat because things were starting to go sour. The break happened. Then they go into the bubble and obviously they got hot. But I think, you know, if you look at that team, there were pieces that were unknowns. Tyler wasn't a known yet. Kendrick Nunn was certainly not a known yet. The way that they played, Jimmy wasn't supposed to be as good as he was that year. Kelly Olynyk was good that year. Duncan Robinson comes out. That's where I think there's pieces on this team that I hope, and I'm kind of forecasting, I hope, but I think that that team, if we can get back to ball movement and not that sticky basketball where it's stagnant, I think that we can be okay. Defensively, we're always in the top 12 year after year under Spo. I think that they can be okay. It's just a matter of, as we said earlier, I think it's really about Jimmy. I really do. I think he's our best player. It could be Bam, but I think he's our best player, and if we go as far as he goes. I agree. We all agree. I think Jimmy's our best player still technically. Bam's our most important player. So for we'll sure. see what happens. But anyway, Sean, thank you so much for hopping on the show. We really appreciate it. And before we hop off, do you want to let the audience know where they can find you online? Yeah, for sure. Um, my Twitter handle is S Rochester MBA. You can find me there. Um, I do five on the floor. I do a lot of gambling stuff uh, for five reasons with prize picks and better edge and things like that. Uh, I also control that five on the floor account. So I try to uh, engage as much as possible with fans on that. So tag us, tweet, uh, you know, hit us, you know, on your tweets and I'll try to retweet and do stuff like that. But I appreciate you, Amir, Trent and Martel for having me on and uh, let's go heat. Thanks again. Thank you, Sean. Any last words, Martel? Like, share, comment, subscribe, and thank you for all the support.